Hi. Now for this question, we're asked to, first of all, solve the equation 4 sine squared x plus 8 cos x minus 7 equals 0. For x being greater than or equal to 0 degrees, but less than or equal to 360 degrees, for 4 marks. And then in part 2, we've got to hence find the solution of the equation 4 sine squared half theta plus 8 cos a half theta minus 7 equals 0. Again, for theta greater than or equal to 0 degrees, but less than or equal to 360 degrees, for 2 marks. So if you'd like to have a go at these two questions, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, I'll give you the numerical answer, and then if you'd like to uh, see how it's done, I'll take you through the work solution. Okay, welcome back then, if you had a go. Now, the numerical answers to parts 1 and 2, well, for parts 1, x equals 60 degrees and 300 degrees. And for part 2, the angle theta equals 120 degrees. Now, if you didn't get these, or just want to see anyway how I went about it, I'll show you. So, for the first part, let's just copy down the question. Okay, we've got 4 sine squared x then, plus 8 cos x, minus 7, and this equals 0. Now when we solve a trigonometric equation, what we should be trying to do is to be able to get it into the same trigonometric function. And for this one, it's possible to get this equation all in terms of cosine x because you should be familiar with this identity. That is that sine squared x plus cos squared x is identical to 1. And from this, we can make sine squared x the subject by taking cos squared x on both sides. Sine squared x is the same as 1 minus cos squared x. And that's what we're going to substitute in here. Instead of 4 multiplied by sine squared x, it's now going to be 1 minus cos squared x. And then we've got plus 8 cos x, and then minus 7, and that equals 0. Now if we expand the bracket, we now have 4 minus 4 cos squared x, plus 8 cos x, minus the 7 equals 0. And what I've got is a quadratic equation here, only this term is negative. So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by minus 1. If I multiply minus 4 cos squared x by minus 1, I get 4 cos squared x. And then for 8 cos x, multiply that by minus 1, you get minus 8 cos x. And at the moment, we've got 4 minus 7, which is minus 3. But if I multiply that by minus 1, I end up with plus 3, and that equals 0. So for this quadratic equation in cos x, we should be able to factorize it. And what we do is we've got a couple of factors here, equals 0. And we're going to have 2 cos x and 2 cos x there so that when you multiply these two together, you get your 4 cos squared x. And then for plus 3, if I choose, say, minus 1 here and minus 3 here, minus 1 times minus 3 is plus 3, and I can see that we get minus 6 cos x here, minus another 2 cos x, which gives us the minus 8 cos x. OK, so now that I factorise this, each of these factors must be equal to 0. So therefore, 2 cos x minus 1 would equal 0. Or the other factor, 2 cos x minus 3, that could equal 0. And if we rearrange this one for cos x by adding 1 to both sides, then dividing by 2, you end up with cosine of x equaling 1 half. And for this one, We'll put or there. If I add 3 to both sides, then divide by 2, I end up with cos of x equals 3 over 2, 1 and a half. Now, the cosine of x only will go between minus 1 and 1. So, if you were to do on your calculator the inverse cos of 3 over 2, you'd find you get no solution, an error. 
would occur. Okay, so we should be familiar with that. That cosine of x only goes between minus one and one then, and so this is out of range. Okay, let's just carry on then with the other value for cos x. Cos x equals a half. So when cos x equals a half, okay, we'll inverse cos both sides and we'll get x equals the inverse cosine of one half. Now, when I'm doing questions like this, I tend to go for the quadrant method, okay, or cast diagram. This is naught degrees. This would be 90 degrees, 180, 270, 360 degrees. Turning, in other words, in an anti-clockwise sense is for positive angles between naught and 360 degrees. So where is cosine positive? Always in the first quadrant. Okay, because we're dealing with a positive value here, cos x equals positive a half. So I draw a line in the first quadrant, and cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant down here. So you draw another line equally inclined to the horizontal line. So these two angles here that I've marked would be exactly the same. So starting from our initial line here, turning anti-clockwise to the first blue line, this is a possible solution for x. We've also got another one starting from here, turning anti-clockwise all the way around to the next blue line. There's a solution there, a possible solution for x. Now when you inverse cos a half, make sure you're in degrees mode on your calculator. If you do that, you should find you get 60 degrees. And that corresponds to this angle in here the blue angle here, which is the same as the red angle. So this is one value of x. The other one, the green one, well that's going to be 360 degrees minus this little blue one, which is 60 degrees, the same as the red one. 360 minus 60 gives us an angle of 300 degrees. So that is the green x. You could try a graphical solution if you want, but as I say, I prefer the quadrant rule for something like this. Okay, well, we move on to the second part now. Now for the second part, it says, hence find the solution then of the equation four sine squared of a half theta plus eight cos of a half theta minus seven equals zero. For theta, greater than or equal to zero degrees, but less than or equal to 360 degrees for two marks. So you might like to pause the video at this stage if you didn't have a go at it in the first time when I suggested pausing the video. So just give you a moment to do that if you wish. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So it says hence here, so it's obviously got something to do with what we've got up here. Well, if you look closely, you can see that the x has been replaced with a half theta. So really we've got that a half theta must equal the x. And so therefore if I multiply by 2, theta would be equal to 2x. And therefore we know that x can be 60 degrees and 300 degrees. So therefore theta must be equal to 2 multiplied by 60 degrees or 2 multiplied by the 300 degrees. However, since theta's got to be between 0 and 360, clearly this one will be out of range, giving us 600 degrees. So I'll just put, therefore, theta equals this one, which is 2 times 60, 120 degrees, as theta must be greater than or equal to 0 degrees, but less than or equal to 360 degrees. All right?